that means that I'm not holding it up as um, something that is uh, a work of art of programming. All right? It's there to illustrate a particular point. And we'll talk about the point that it's trying to illustrate uh, in a minute here. So one of the key things in the, the memory game example is the ability to click on one of the items in the grid and be able to know which one got clicked on so that you can turn the proper card over. So we talked about a couple different ways to do that. I'm talking as I'm making sure that it runs. The way that I suggested would be to have an array list of the, that matched up two things. That matched up the objects as well as the views that show those objects. All right? Because we're, we started off by saying we're going to have a deck of cards. All right? So the deck of cards um, is going to be dealt face down going across. So we have two things in play here. We have our grid of cards, however many they may be, we have to make sure that we leave pairs, all right? And we have to make sure we have an even number of cards. So we have to make sure that there's a match for every card here for this game to work. So that's what we're going to show. When you start off showing the back of the card, and I think I had an image for the back of the card, so you could do that. Now, each one of these corresponds to a different card object. And we have to have a way to link the card object to the view. And what I suggested is having an array list of both. So we have an array list of cards. cards, let's say, and we have an array list of image views. And when we click on this, we have to know what card object ties to that so that we can essentially flip over the card, that is, ask the card what card you are, get the image for it, and display it. All right? So we're going to do this with a series of parallel array lists. And again, the idea of a parallel array list is a subscript of one matches a subscript of the other. So they're corresponding. The zero element in both arrays represents the same thing. In the image view, it represents this image view. And the cards array list that represents a card that's tied to that image view. So when we click on that, what we do is we get past to our on-click event the view that got clicked on. All right? We effectively have to look through this array list to find out which view got clicked on. All right? Once we found which view got clicked on, we know which card that it belongs to, because it's corresponding. If we clicked on, in this case, element 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we know that that corresponds to the card in the position 6. So we can get that element, get the face of it, and swap out the image for this. So we can show whatever card it is, the queen of hearts or whatever. All right? That, in a nutshell, is what the problem is, and why this particular example is relevant. What I did is a very, very, very scaled down version of this, because I wanted you to have the fun of doing this. What I have is 
I have two coins. Heads or tails. All right. They're randomly created with either a head or a tail. I don't know what's on the tail, usually an eagle. Close enough, I suppose. And what I did is I wrote code that when you click on one of these, it just flips a coin. So what this has in common with that is when I click on an image view, instead of having a array list of cards and array list of image views, I have an array list of coin objects. I created a coin object that corresponds to the array list of images. And when you click on one, we figure out which coin image we clicked on, find the corresponding coin object that belongs to it, flip the coin, all right? By flip it, I mean if it's heads, make it tails. If it's tails, make it, flip, make it uh, heads. And then display the new value for the coin. Now, because my main point of this example was showing you how we could use uh, an array list and the on-click event to match up these things from these two arrays, the main code that I'm showcasing is in the onClick event and functions that get called after the uh, click event. I, I broke down the code into a couple of functions. All right. I am less concerned with how I form these array lists. So I hard coded two images in my XML. All right. That doesn't mean you should hard code 32 images in your XML. All right. I hard coded two. I went in brute force attach the on uh, click listener to um, each of these and so on. So the way that I set things up, I did just the simplest way, the most straightforward way, because I was only dealing with two. You should try to be clever when you do that. But the technique that I'm trying to show you is from the on click method, finding which coin object corresponds to which image, flipping the coin from heads to tails or tails to head, and then redisplaying it. Okay, so that's a part of this that's relevant here. So, let me show you the app. We'll take a look at it, and we'll take a look at the most relevant code here. get used to working with two screens. All right. Sometimes I have a hard time getting used to working with one screen. I mean, I, I revert back to the punch card methods, but one screen I think I sort of have the hang. All right, so let's run this and let's see how it behaves.
I have a coin class. Only has one property, it's heads. That property gets initialized based on a random flip of the coin. I generate a random number, and if the random number is less than 0 0.5, it makes it heads. If it's greater than 0 0.5, it makes it tails. I have a method that returns the image name that simply says that if it's heads, the image name is heads.jpg. If it's tails, the image name is tails.jpg, which I have as assets.
set content view. All right. So normally we just say find view by ID, and we don't proceed it with the object that we're looking for. And the assumption is if we do that, we're looking for it in the main content view. Here, we're looking for it in the view that we just inflated. So we're looking for it in that XML file. And I added them. And this corresponds to that. This corresponds to, so this one goes with this one. This one goes with this one. So when I'm done, I have an array list of coins, array list of views, and they match up. Or the zeroth element matches up with the zero. Element one matches with element one. I then set the image for each of these. All right? So I have a function called set image, and I give it a zero or a one that specifies which image I want to set. So, I do all the things I need to do to pull in that asset. I set my asset manager, I create an input stream, I create a drawable called coin, and I get the image name from the coin that matches the argument. So, when I say when I say set image zero, what it's going to do is it's going to grab element zero from the coins array list and give me the image name, which is either heads or tails, depending on when I created that coin, if it set it to heads or if it set it to tails. I'm then going to draw or create a drawable from that coin. Then I set the same image view image drawable to that drawable that I created. So the key thing with this is this arg, which gets passed in, looks at the position of the coin, grabs a coin from that position, grabs the view from that position, gets the image name from that coin object, and sets the image drawable from the drawable that was created from that image name. Questions about that? Is set image drawable? Is that something you wrote? No. Okay. No, it's a function that exists on a image view that allows us to take a drawable, which we can create from our asset, and set the that view's image to that drawable. So effectively, uh, the short version of this is it sets the image, sets that particular image view to that, the image found in that file. And it does it through the mechanism of creating a drawable. Using that one-to-one -one relationship between the elements. Using the one-to-one -one relationship, right. So that R matches that. So if we pass in a zero, we set the first coin. If we pass in a one, we set the second coin. Now I can do this because I define that view as being uh, my, my views uh, array list is a view uh, is an array list of image views. All right, so I don't have to cast it as an image view. All right, it's already been casted as an image view when we put it in that array list. So that array list views contains image views. So I know that that function set image double is available because that's available on images. Other questions about this? Now, my on-click listener, which I don't like the way this shows it. Yeah, this is actually, this is actually, and we're studying these in the uh, Java 2 class on the uh, um, um, University of Akron. This is actually using the lambda expression uh, methodology for this. This simply says that this, this gets an argument v, and it uh, calls the function, uh, it v's an argument to the function, and the function simply says, 
flip V. So if we look at the more conventional Java code, our, we create an on-click listener, which is a new on-click listener, and the on-click listener, when the view is clicked on, we call the flip method on V. All right? So we call the flip method on V. Remember, this got assigned to each of the two views. So when we click it, we call the flip method on V. Here's what I'm playing a little bit with the polymorphism as well. Because I didn't want to, you know, I could have cast, I could have made this argument an image view and casted V to a image view, but there's really no need to. Um, I, I, can, I can compare them even though the one is an image view and the other is a view. So when I click on a view, essentially I pass it to this flip function, which accepts as an argument of view. What is that flip function going to do? Well, it's going to flip the coin that corresponds to that view, is really what it's doing. It's not, I guess it's flipping the view, but it's flipping the image, it's flipping the coin object that is associated with that view. So what do I do? I loop through to find out which view in our array list is equal to the V argument that was passed in. So I loop through for I equals zero, I less than int view size, I plus plus, sort of the standard uh, syntax for looping through an array list. And I compare each of the elements in the array list with that view that I passed in. What view is that? The one that got clicked on. So in a nutshell, what I'm doing is I'm looking for, in the list of views, which view got clicked on. And I'm doing it by comparing objects. What does it mean when we say object, you know, object one equals, equals object two? What does that mean? means it's the same object, right? So it's not asking, for example, are they both displaying the same image, all right? Uh, it's comparing the two pointers. And the two pointers, um, if something has the two pointers, it means it's the same object. So the object that we've clicked on, all right, which is V, we're finding what position that has in my array list of image views. When we have a winner, we set that variable which to the value of i. So which, when we're done, has the value that corresponds to the position in the uh, view list array. Which means that that's the position in the coins array. So as long as we found something, in other words, I initialize it to negative 1 just as a fluke, case it didn't find anything. But if we found a match somewhere, I flip the coin, I use the coin from the array list, and call the flip function on it, which again changes it either from heads to tails or tails to head. And then I say, okay, set the image of whichever one I just flipped. And that calls this function again which looks at the coin, gets the image name from it, creates a drawable for it, finds a view that corresponds to that integer, and sets the image drawable for it. Questions about this? So with this technique, we don't care what the image is called. We're more interested in the view. Since we know that
sure I understand what you're asking. I might not understand. Okay. <laughs> well, let, let, let me answer what I'm hearing, okay. and then you can tell me if it's different than that. Keep in mind this code simply makes sure that we can match the view to our object. All right? And <coughs> the way that we did it, we do it with a parallel arrays where one element and one has a one one correspondent between the elements of the, the two arrays. All right, so they're the same size. Element n in one array matches up with element n in the other array. So yeah, in doing this, we don't care the particular image. We don't care about what image is showing there at the time. We don't care what image is eventually going to be. We're just matching image to card. So think about what we're going to do here. All right, we're going to do a similar thing, right? All our cards are going to be face down, right? So all of our images are going to be the face down image, all right? So, but each of those views is going to be tagged to a card, right? So when we click on the card, I'm sorry, when we click on the view, we need to know what image to display in that card, in that image view. And we'll get that from the corresponding card. All right? Does that make sense? Yeah. I think okay. So. so, yeah. Now, the other thing we have to do with this is we have to keep track because we're going to click two cards, right? Each move, each turn constitutes clicking two cards. So we need to remember the first card that was clicked and then we need to remember the second card that was clicked. All right? And then we need to compare to see if they're the same card or not. All right? Questions? Questions about what this does, first of all, and how that code works and so on. It's hard coming up with examples without like giving away the farm, right? So I think this example is a good start, but there's still a fair amount of work that you have to do. But first, I want to make sure that you understand this example. Okay. It's just simply uh, swapping the images in the image view, right? It's, it's simply associating the image view with an object and knowing that when we click on this, that we um, are going to grab um, we're going to grab that object to determine what the image needs to be. All right. In my case, I'm grabbing whether it's simply head or tails. In your case, you'll have to grab what the actual image is. All right. uh, if you're going to do the list of assets, if you're going to draw the card again, then, then uh, you still have to match up the view that you click on with the card object. Because I imagine the card object has a logic to draw itself. Okay. Other questions about this? All right, so let's think of how this is going to be different. Say 
All right, XML file, you got 16 cards. So I'd have a four by four grid. That's 12 cards. All right, so I have those. I have those in my XML. Um, I could probably do something clever with their IDs, all right? Like giving them an ID of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Could do that, or I could call this row 0, column 0, row 0, column 1. I could do something clever with the IDs, all right? I would write code that went and grabbed all those and put them in my image views list. So I have my images, uh, my array list of images, image views, and I'm going to populate it. I do that like right off the bat. I then need to have my array list of cards. Now. could probably do this a couple different ways. We have 16 cards. How are we going to make sure that there's eight pairs? I was thinking draw eight and then double them. Um, I'm going just for the face value. I'm not worried about the suit right now. Okay. So in other words, a jack of diamonds matches a jack of clubs. Okay. Not even that. I don't want to go that far. I would say give me a ten of hearts and double it so that are two ten. Okay, that works too. Just as a start. Okay, that works. That, that's fine. The other thing you could do is you could draw draw eight cards and then use a face and another suit. Because they, you know, so like we drew a, a, heart, a heart, you draw a diamond. You know, just randomly pick one of the other three. So I like that. That's better than what I was thinking. All right? Um... What I was thinking is if there's four of those, then I could limit to four out of the 13 faces. I could randomly pick four faces. So I could limit my cards to a brute force way, two, threes, fours, and fives, the first four. Or if I wanted to do from the top down, ace, king, queen, jack. Or I could randomly pick four faces. So fours, eights, tens, and kings. All right? But that, that approach is great, too. So come up with your array list of cards. Depending on how you do it, you probably want to give them a good shuffle, right? Because if you generate them the way you did, it'd be pretty obvious that this was a tad and tad. Yeah. yeah. So give them a shuffle. All right. So you generate the card, shuffle them, and then you have these two matching arrays. All right. These initially get displayed with the back, as was said, stated. Like, sort of taking inventory 
of what you know and what you don't know. All right? And then coming back and maybe doing it a clever way in your next round. All right? But at the very least, you could write 16 fine view by IDs and add it to an array list. Right? At the very least. All right? And the idea of doubling the cards works great too. All right? Um, so we have that. All right. We associate a on-click event with all 16 of them. Again, it would be great if we had a clever way to do that, but if we don't, for the first pass, 16 add click listener. All right? And it'll work. All right? That way you can focus on parts of it and leave parts of it to later. In my mind, it's about making progress. All right? Taking what you know, taking what you think you can figure out, and maybe leaving some things for later. It's like, yeah, okay, we'll get it working, then I'll worry about doing that a more clean way. Or the ability to configure the number of cards or something like that. Okay, so what does on, our on-click listener do? I think we have an instance variable in the fragment that says what choice we're on. What Which click? I don't know. I can't think of a good variable name. Something that means if we're on the first click or the second click. All right? So we probably initialize it to zero. On the on click event, what do we do? All right? We are going to get a view. We're going to add one to which click. We are going to figure out which which view element got clicked on? It's a long function name. All right. That was what was in my example. I figured out which view got clicked on. So I'm going to store that as. Which, maybe? I don't know. If which click equals one, I'm going to store which in the first card. Otherwise, I'm going to store which in the second card. Yes. On your long method. Huh? Do you mean do you mean to say which card element cards put that? Because you we are we already in the view, right? I mean, well, we know which view is clicked on. We have to figure out which what position that view has in the array list to find out which card. Position. Yeah. So finding the card and finding the view is the same thing. Right? We're gonna we're going to pass, we have a view. So that's we, the one where you iterate it through the list. That's the one we're going to iterate through the list and look for a match between this argument and the array list. And we'll get back one of the subscripts from this, and that will be the card. So you could say which equals iterate through view. Is that what you're really doing there? That's what this is doing. Iterating through the view. This is looping okay. through view array list. So that's the code that I have in my example. We're then going to I'm doing this very pseudo-code-ish. After we figure
figure out which one, we're going to display the card. Because we know which card we want to display. So we know which view we want to display. It's that position in the view list. And we know what card it is. We'll do our magic, grab the asset, grab the image, blah, 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 blah. And say, if this is the view that's clicked on and it was the Jack of Hearts, boom, we're going to display the Jack of Hearts there. the argument of that function? Well, the two cards. Either we store the two card objects in this guy, or we store the two subscripts. Either way, it doesn't really matter. So what will that do? That will have some algorithm for evaluating if those two cards are the same. It will get the first card out of the array list, get the second card out of the array list, and depending on what rules you're playing by, either the suit and the card has to match, the suit and the face has to match, or just the face has to match, or the face and the color has to match. Those can be parameters. For your first pass, pick one. <laughs> All right. If you're doing like you suggested, where you're going to have, if you pull the ace of hearts, you'll pull two ace of hearts up there, that's fine, right? So then... You'll have your algorithm will match and say if the face equals face and suit equals suit. Okay, so let's go return a true or false, right? If it's a match, what are we going to do?
probably put that here, I guess. Do a little pause. You can also like do a little animation to like kind of like flip the, move the cards out. Absolutely. You could do animation. If if they match, you could make them get big. If they didn't match, you could I don't know, you could do all kinds of fun stuff. That I would say is <laughs> the third week uh, portion of the lab assignment. All right, when, when you do that. Uh, unless you really made some really great progress <laughs> this week, in which case, eh, put it in whatever you want. All right, but yeah, that would be a great thing. That would be the nice little touch to make the game a, a more pleasant user experience and so on. Now, depending on whether you want it to be a two game, two player game, or one player game, um, if it's just a one player game, you simply want to count the number of turns. All right? So, Here, you'd increment the turns. Defining a turn as two clicks. All right? If you were playing against a bot, then you'd have to have your score, the bot score, and you'd just have to make sure you incremented it. Keep in mind, this is like true pseudocode. I guess that's obvious if you just look at it, that it's crude something, all right? It might be crude scribblings, but yeah, this is crude pseudocode. So again, I hope I'm not giving away the farm here, but I do want to, I think the idea is for some of these like bigger things like this, I kind of want to like nudge in the right direction and let you work through the details because we can logically talk about what you have to do, but that's still some code that you got to write. I mean, this is not like, it's not like, you know, every line has been defined and you can just go for it. So I, I think this just gives you an overview, a sketch of, of what you want to do. This would be something similar to back when I worked as a software developer and I worked with less experienced developers. This would be the kind of thing I would do when, when assisting them with some code, right? I wouldn't necessarily write it for them, but I'd sort of sketch out in general how it works. And, you know, there's probably things I didn't think of in this, all right, that you're going to run into, the gotchas, right? But I think this at least gives you a pretty good roadmap to get moving in the right direction and uh, make some progress on it. Any questions on this? What are some other things that we want to talk about regarding this? Okay. There's a there's a method in, in in the view object that allows you to um, to set visibility and um, and then it will just and the primary will be I it's an integer, so you can just take it and view that visible or view that invisible sort between the two. And is it gone? It's gone. I think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so I as a safety in the blackjack game, I did it as I took the layout, the linear layout thing, and said dot remove view at, and then gave it an element. So if you look at remove view at, I should get away. Okay. Sorry. Well, we don't know. <laughs> hey, um, there's one school of thought that says if you guys are answering each other's questions, then 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 that's great. <laughs> it's better if I answer them, you know. Uh, the, uh, the one thing you want to be careful for, though, is when you remove it, you don't want to shift the grid. That's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So what could you do? Well, I was thinking you could make an invisible. Could make an invisible card. Invisible, invisible. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So if invisible doesn't cut it, I don't know off the top of my head if you make this. There might be something you can do with the layout, so it takes space even if it's there. Or you could put a blank space there. Or you could leave the two cards there, I guess. That's not a horrible thing to do. Yeah, just leave the two cards face up. You could, you could leave them there face up. Um, I kind of don't like that, though, because part of the thing is like, gee, I think there's a six over there. Oh, yeah, there it is. You know, you're supposed to remember where it was, and when it goes away, part of the game is to remember that it used to be there. So 
Yeah, so, but you know, maybe as a first pass, if you could do that. All right, other questions? I have one, but I, it's a little, it's very specific to like, for the, for a settings view, so. Well, you can ask it if, if, if it's, if, unless it's gonna take like a long time to ask. I think it would. Okay. <laughs> 